Let's get straight to the rub of today's issue, which is the escalation against Huawei. One of my guests described the American tactic as a nuclear option. What would be your perception of that phrase? Are we at nuclear option in this uh, trade war with this move? Well, to me, it looks like an escalation in unilateral trade protectionism, in unilateralism, uh, in international trade and investment, hitting now a raw nerve uh, called technology, uh, which uh, is an indication that this trade discussion is moving big time into geopolitics, technology being the big... Uh, basically the big power uh, of the economy in the 21st century is what powers the economy, is therefore what uh, gives uh, a bit of a strategic advantage. And I think there is a big fight between the U.S. and China at the moment to see who will win this fight uh, for the future. Now, the problem is that this is done in a unilateral manner that is not being taken well by markets, that is not being accepted uh, by uh, economic operators, and this is not good news. Uh, it needs to be done in a cooperative manner rather than in this uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, conflict, conflictual manner. Yes. Uh, Arantxa, various members of the Trump administration have said before that the Huawei issue is separate uh, to the tariff discussions. But then, of course, there's a lot of um, people out there saying that Huawei is being used as a bargaining chip, excuse the pun. Is this a huge miscalculation on the part of President Trump in actually using Huawei as a bargaining chip and escalating a trade war with, as Bloomberg editorial has said, no obvious end. Well, the intention may be different, but this is not what markets are... Uh pricing, basically. What we're seeing is a, a slowdown in international trade. We got the latest figures from the World Trade Organization yesterday. We've got a slowdown in investment. We've got a slowdown in the global economy. And consensus view from all economic operators and all international organizations that are watching and analyzing this is that trade, protectionism, unilateral measures are having a disproportionate impact in this bad news. So maybe the intention is to use this as a bargaining chip, but at the moment it is basically contributing to slowing, slowing down the global economy and to introducing uncertainty in the global economy. Hence the need to pause, the need to sit down, the need to talk, to go back to the negotiating table and discuss. Now, Arantxa, you use the words very clearly, unilateral action, but the unilateral action between the two is having a global reverberation. Last time you and I caught up, we talked about World Trade Organization as being the forum for discussion, but that just does not apply to the world of Donald Trump at the moment. How do they reconcile and move the discussions along? You, because they are bilateral at the moment. Well, it's, it's fine. At the moment, they are not. They, they were bilateral, uh, but they also stopped those discussions. I mean, bilateral should be first. Sit down and talk. They need to find a way to uh, discuss and reach an agreement on the grievances that exist on both sides, by the way, uh, on the U.S. side, on the Chinese side. But this is not enough. As you rightly say, the world economy is highly integrated. What happens in China has ripple effects uh, here in Geneva. What happens in the U.S. has ripple effects in Latin America and in Africa. And all of this have to, has to be inputted in a way. Uh, there is a table to input this discussion at the global level is called World Trade Organization, who happens to be in Geneva. So it's important to open, reopen the channels of communication between the U.S. and China, but it's equally important to bring yes. this uh, to a global table so that we can find global stability.